Everybody, Greg coming here from Good News for Israel. It's a joy again to be with you. Uh, and we're going to be taking five. And Salari just means take some time out and enjoy God. Think about Him. Pray a bit. Read the Word. Open up the Word of God. Um, meditate on the Lord. We're talking from Genesis chapter 12 and verse 8, where it says uh, that God. Uh, Abram moved from Shechem to the mountain east of Bethel and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east and there he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Well, there's a few things in that scripture that give us a bit of an idea of where uh, Bethel, which is how Bethel is correctly pronounced, <clears throat> where it actually is. We're spending time talking about Bethel because of its importance in the scriptures, both historically and in the future. So let's try and find Bethel on the map, starting with some very specific details that the Lord's already given in that scripture we just read, describing this city and spe specifically by the surrounding towns and cities. So the first city we're going to look at is the city of Ai, pronounced in Hebrew, Ai, not Ai, as I've heard most people uh, say. So from the scripture, Genesis 12, verse 8, it says, When Abram arrived in the region after trekking from Shechem, we find there must be a mountain between Bethel and Ai. The Hebrew word for mountain here is ha, which means mountain or hill. We often think of, of Ai as the city that Joshua fought with after he conquered Jericho, but that's not the same city, believe it or not. Uh, they're near each other, but they're not the same city. And the reason we know that is that they're, that they're, not, they're not the same is because of what the scripture says and the archaeology. So, um, firstly, Joshua's Eye is a very small fortified city. Secondly, it has to have been in existence when Joshua and the children of Israel entered the land around about 1400 BC, 1400 BC. Archaeologists believe that the small fortified city, which is only about three acres in size of named I in Joshua's time, is in the current position of what's called Kerbet el Machatir. And it, it seems to be proved by the pottery found there and other landmarks um, that show that this is the site that's most likely the site for Joshua's I. And we're going to look at that <clears throat> in another time together. On the other hand, the city of I in Abram's time was a very landmark city. It was, um, it was, a, it was presumably a large city and has a hill or hills between it and Bethel. And the larger city of Ai of Abram's time is most likely the current site of Et Tel. Now that's a huge city. It's about 27 acres. It's a, it's a big uh, landmark city. And the pottery indicates that this city was a thriving city at the time of Abram but did not exist at the time of Joshua, which was, of course, more than 400 years later or more. So Bethel is what is referred to as a living city. And a living city is a city that has never really been uninhabited throughout the ages because of its superb location. It's got water, water source, trade routes, etc. Non-living cities, of course, of course, rise and fall and eventually become ghost towns. So uh, let's have uh, Jerusalem, for example, is an example of a living city. I, on the other hand, is an example of a non-living city. So at the time of Abram, Bethel, which we think is at El Birei, the current town of El Birei near Ramallah, was a large, thriving city. And I, which is at Etel, was a large, thriving set, city too. Um, and I was about five kilometres or three miles east of Bethel, and there are several hills between them. So Abram and his family and his herds and his servants um, established their tent village on one of the hills, presumably the closest one between Bethel and, and I, and with Bethel on the west and I on the east, as the scripture says. 
So they're two significant large Canaanite cities high up on the mountains with views back down towards Shechem to the north, uh, views to the west to the Mediterranean Sea, views to the east across the, the Jordan Valley towards the desert, and views to the south to current day Jerusalem. So thank you, Lord, for such a specific de uh, description to give us so that we can know where Abram set up his altar. Here's a question. Do you think that God, who is so precise in telling us where one of the landmarks of the land is uh, to be inherited by the descendants of Abram, is just as precisely interested in your life, in your marriage, in your children, in your salvation, in your understanding? Why not now take a moment, pause and consider, Salah, and pray and thank the Lord that he cares for you? Even if everything seems like a mess right now at the moment, why not pause and give him thanks? Just lift your spirit by thanking him. Spend a moment to pray for other brothers and sisters in, in, in persecuted places. Our hearts uh, particularly go out to Christians in, in places where there's great persecution. Nigeria at the moment is a, a dangerous place. And uh, we just pray for strength under great trial. So uh, if you want to do a little bit more study on this, go to uh, the website of the Associates for Biblical Archaeology and, and look up your archaeology for yourself. It's a fascinating subject for those who are, are interested in that. We're going to continue on with this subject next time. But in the meantime, the Lord bless you and uh, goodbye for now.